So, the day has finally come. My evil twin is finally out in Honkai Star Rail, and I must now indulge my audience with how he works. Hey YouTube, welcome to my complete guide on adventuring, going over all the details you need to get the King of Free Shields ready to rain coins on your enemies. In this video, we'll be going over all of his traces and what he does, Adelons and any effects on his gameplay, optimal choices for light cones and relics, recommended stat ranges for a full build, and team synergies that he protects. Let's begin. So, Aventurine's gameplay design is super straightforward, easy to understand, and completely autopilot. He sets up an AoE shield for your entire team, gains stacks of his passive whenever allies are attacked or when your allies do follow-up attacks, and then occasionally drops Gamba coins on their faces, dealing follow-up DPS himself. It's so simple that as the player, you really don't have to do much, and you can just sit back and watch the magic happen. For those of you looking for a character that suits a lazy playstyle, Aventurine checks all the boxes. Free damage, free shields, and pretty good skill point management on auto. Here's how he works. Before you enter battle, you can opt to use Aventurine's technique, which is an RNG defense buff that benefits the whole team. The buff ranges from 24 to 60%, and using the technique multiple times will only replace the buff if it's higher. When you enter battle, you will immediately notice two things. First, Aventurine's A4 trace, Hot Hand, immediately goes into effect, granting his AoE shield to all allies with the same strength as the one provided by his skill. This means your team starts with his shield without needing to use a skill point, which is great for autopiloting content. Second, his tooltip has a counter out of 7 called Blind Bet, starting at 0. Blind Bet goes up from either one of two things. First is from his talent. Every ally that has his shield, a fortified wager, will have their effect resistance increased, and when they get attacked, Aventurine will gain one stack of Blind Bet. The tooltip here is weirdly worded and says single ally, but in the game, the buff is available for every character on your team. If Aventurine himself has his own shield, he can resist crowd control debuffs regardless of his effect resistance, but this has a cooldown of 2 turns. He still gains the effect resistance from his talent in order to activate any light cone, relic, or planner ornament passives. Second is from his A6 trace, Bingo! If an ally with his shield deals a follow-up attack, Aventurine will also get one blind bet stack, but this can only happen up to 3 times per Aventurine's turn, so there is a limit. His talent has no limit for when allies get attacked. His A6 trace is also responsible for providing a mini extra shield when his follow-up attack activates, giving about 25-30% to of his skill's overall shield to everyone and doubling it for the ally with the lowest shield at that time. When Aventurine reaches at least 7 points of blind bet, he'll launch a 7-hit follow-up attack dealing minor imaginary damage to a random enemy per hit. Blind bet can overcap up to 10 points and will overflow after his follow-up attack. This is possible with enemies launching AoE attacks against multiple team members providing 2-4 to four stacks instantly, or with his ultimate. Speaking of his ultimate, this ability is Gamba and grants 1-7 to seven blind bet stacks, inflicts a debuff on the enemy, and deals single target imaginary damage. The debuff is called a nerf and increases the crit damage against that enemy, and comes before Aventurine does his ult damage to benefit from it. His skill is the base shield he provides to all allies, and stacks on itself capping at 200% of the base stats. And finally, his basic attack deals single target imaginary damage based off of his defense. Interestingly enough, while most of his kit is responsible for producing and maintaining an AoE shield, his sub DPS damage output should not go unnoticed. His A2 trace also gives him an exceptional conversion of his defense to crit rate, where every 100 defense above 1600 gives him 2% crit rate up to a max of 48%. So basically, a 4000 defense Aventurine will automatically have plus 48% crit rate, which is super easy to build around and make him sub DPS. Alright, so trace priority. Skill over ultimate and talent over the normal attack. Basically, everything relies on the shield being as strong as possible, even if you're running sub DPS, and the base stats of that shield come from his skill, so definitely prioritize his skill first. Then his ultimate is important for the crit damage scaling on his debuff, as well as the nuke damage, and his talent is important for the effect resistance scaling for the entire team, as well as the damage dealt by his follow-up attack. I would consider investing into all of these traces, as they all synergize very well with each other. Basic attack can be left at whatever you wish. Trace stat notes. So he gains defense, imaginary damage, and effect resistance from his stat nodes. While you technically only need to care about his defense and effect res for survivability, imaginary damage does very much assist with his sub DPS, so I'd recommend unlocking every branch node. It's also beneficial to level 80 him because his final trace node is 10% defense. 
Adalons. So thankfully, Aventurine's base kit at E0 is very solid. His Adalons do improve the quality of life, uptime, and damage of his abilities, but they are far from necessary and not needed for F2P or budget players. If you are willing to invest in more copies of him, I would say that E1 provides the most impactful quality of life for his gameplay. And as a full disclaimer, no matter what, in my opinion, Adalons are never worth the price to pay. Only indulge if it is within your ability. E1, 20% free crit damage to all allies with his shield, and his ultimate now also grants his team the same shield provided by his skill, making the strength and uptime of it significantly better. This also makes Aventurine a bit more SP positive, reducing the need to refresh his skill and instead allowing you to rely on his follow-up attack and ultimate for the shield strength. E2, complementing E1 using his basic attack now has 12% all type res reduction for 3 turns. So this is complementing because E1 basically means that you don't have the skill, which means that whenever it hits his turn, he'll probably be basic attacking. E3 and E5. These are standard level increases. The ultimate gains plus 2 at E3, and the skill and talent gain plus 2 at E5. E4, his follow-up attack first grants him 40% defense for 2 turns, and then it adds 3 more attacks to his follow-up from 7 to 10. And finally, E6. All sources of his damage gain 150% damage bonus, assuming that every ally has a shield, which should be most of the time. This is roughly double damage under average team setups. So overall, Aventuring gains quality of life at E1 and E2, and then increased DPS at E4 and E6. Light cones. So good news. Aventuring is a pretty stereotypical defense scaling defensive unit, which means he basically uses almost all of the light cones in that category. Of course, his signature light cone is first priority if you happen to pull it, but otherwise any of the others are kind of fair game. If you have multiple, pick the one that best suits the team that you're running him on. Signature light cone, inherently unjust destiny. It provides a defense increase, a crit damage increase for himself, and follow-up attack brands the enemies with a debuff that grants 10% damage bonus to the ally targeting it. Very nice for aventuring, grants him defensive, offensive, and utility all in one light cone. Now let's take a look at the other light cones. 5 stars. Japards, pretty solid stat stick, and also increased taunt. The effect hit rate is not really valuable here because it'll only affect the unnerved debuff on the ult, which is unmissable, so you don't need it. Fushens, HP and energy regeneration, not useful for him. Texture of memories, a bit of effect resistance and damage reduction. Aventuring will almost always have his own shield up, so the middle part of this is not particularly useful, maybe only in emergencies, so he's basically just getting the damage reduction. 4 stars. Day 1. Defense and ultimate resistance. Landhouse. Taunt increase and damage reduction. Trend of the universal market. Defense increase and a burn. Useful if pairing him with Acheron and you don't have his signature light cone. Wildfire. Damage reduction and top off healing. Not the greatest choice, but it still works. This is me. Defense increase and increased ultimate damage. Usable and more DPS oriented. Destiny's threats effect resistance increase, and a damage bonus increase. This, in my opinion, is strictly better than This Is Me, and definitely the 4-star go-to for a DPS-focused aventuring. He'll cap out the passive of this light cone at 4,000 defense for the maximum damage increase, just like his crit rate passive from A2 Trace. And I'm not going to consider the 3 stars here, because every single 4-star can be used. So, looking at light cones overall, only Fushen's signature is not really synergistic with him, which means Aventurine has one of the broadest light cone options out of all characters. Pretty good. In general, I would recommend the following. The signature over Japart or Texture Memories for the base stat over any 4-star that fits your needs. Which is not really a recommendation per se, but that's honestly how I feel about his light cones. They're all super similar, so it really depends if you want defense increase, damage reduction, effect resistance, or a more DPS-oriented one. Alright, so, is Aventurine F2P friendly? In my opinion, absolutely. His main purpose for most players will be to keep your team alive, and he does not need his signature light cone to do that, nor are Adalons necessary. His base kit is very solid, with high uptime shields that refresh and stack constantly, while also dealing follow-up damage basically for free whenever his passive is ready. If we were to consider how his Light Cone and Adelon affects things, this is how I'd break it down. Signature Light Cone gives him slightly higher defense percent, but mostly grants him crit damage that no other Light Cone has, so it's really just a sub DPS increase. E1 is probably the most impactful, but doesn't change his core gameplay by a significant amount. This just decreases his reliability on his skill, which does make him more SP friendly, but overall I think he's still pretty skill point friendly to begin with. E2 and higher focus on giving him more damage output, which is pretty standard for 5-star Adalons. So with all these things in mind, I do think that he's pretty F2P friendly. 
relics and planner ornaments so best in slot four piece relic set is knight of purity for sure as raw defense increase and increased shield strength which are the best of both worlds for him if you want to consider a dedicated four piece dps set imaginary is there but i wouldn't really recommend it because attacking an imprisoned enemy is not always guaranteed besides that we got some solid two piece two piece mixtures two piece knight and two piece imaginary of course two piece guard for damage reduction two piece duke for follow-up attack damage and two piece hacker space for speed this includes defensive and offensive options. Four planner ornaments, two piece Bellabog for more defense, but the effect hit rate part is not super great unless you're running Signature Lycone or Trend of Universal Market. Two piece Inert Salsoto is the most synergistic for his entire kit, granting 8% crit rate and 15% ult and follow up attack damage. 50% crit rate for the passive is basically guaranteed with his A2 trace converting defense to crit rate. And two-piece Broken Keel is always an option for a supportive set, and then either of the two-piece Energy Regeneration sets if you've got no other options. This includes Von Wack and Penaconi. In my opinion, I don't really recommend them because the buffs you get are pretty niche compared to the other two-piece options. Main stats. Pretty impressive variety of main stats you can run on Aventuring. He can be heavily defense focused for his shield, or heavily DPS focused for his ult and follow-up attack damage, or something in between. Pure stat heavy sub DPS, crit damage body, defense boots, imaginary orb, and a defense rope. This build focuses entirely on follow up attack damage and the occasional ult nuke. No speed or ERR is necessary. Then we have a balanced sub DPS with speed or ERR. This involves either one of two builds crit damage body, speed boots, imaginary orb with defense rope, or crit damage body, defense boots, imaginary orb, and an ERR rope. This category trades one defense main stat for either speed or ERR. This increases his ult uptime by a solid amount, which further increases his follow-up attack uptime and debuff uptime. For a pure defense supportive shielder, crit damage or defense body, speed boots, defense orb, and ERR rope. This sacrifices his orb to be defense and adds both speed and ERR, and then optionally trades his body for defense to maximize on full utility for both his shield strength uptime and ult debuff uptime. Now, all of these builds mentioned should have at least one defense main stat to reach close to or over 4,000 defense. If you don't have Signature Light Cone, then you can run any of the three builds. It's up to you. If you have S1 Light Cone, Prioritize either the balanced or the DPS build to use the built-in crit rate crit damage and also his light cone's crit damage. If you're E4 plus with at least S1 light cone, you whales can prioritize the damage-oriented builds. For me personally, I will have an E0 S1 and will probably run the balanced build of crit damage, speed, imaginary, and defense. I don't feel the need for ERR rope because he'll be generating lots of passive energy from getting hit and follow-up attacks, and I'd rather him to be on speed boots over ERR rope so he can reset his A6 trace node to gain more blind bets from other follow-up attack characters. In order to do that, his turn needs to happen, so speed boots will help with that over ERR. Recommended stat ranges for a full build. So, because Aventurine has pretty flexible main stats depending on what you want to achieve, his stat ranges are going to be pretty broad, so just keep that in mind. Assuming the following investment, level 80 out of 80 character and light cone, all defense branch notes unlocked as well, defense, 4000 plus. With signature light cone, one main stat is all that's needed. For a 4 star light cone, you might need extra substats or two main stats to achieve this because of lower base stats. Speed, optional can either just be base 106 speed or can have speed boots like I do. No requirement for him to be at a specific speed threshold because it isn't important for him to squeeze out extra turns for Memory of Chaos cycles. Crit rate, base 5%, anywhere up to 40%. His A2 trace conversion does not show up in the stat page, so if you have 4000 plus defense, you'll be getting plus 48% crit rate in battle. Crit damage, 150% plus including crit damage body if you care about his sub DPS, otherwise it can be whatever you want. ERR, Optional, 100% is fine, 119.4 with energy rope is also fine. Effect resistance, any extra substats is fine. His talent gives him about 40-50% to 50 effect resistance for free as long as he has his own shield. Looking at his stats from an overall viewpoint, nothing really matters except the amount of defense he has. So, from that angle, he's pretty kind when it comes to stat requirements. Team synergies, so Aventurine is a preservation character with an AoE shield, so he's by default a part of the survival squad. If trying to build a complete team comp that has sustain, you'll need at least one survival unit. Of course, you can always opt for a glass cannon team to zero cycle, in which case you won't need survival, and Aventurine won't apply it to that situation. 
But in cases where you do want something complete, Aventurine's definitely got you covered. So with his infinite uptime AoE shield, he's very similar functionally to Jepard without the requirement of cycling his ultimate. For his own blind bet stacks, he'll be relying on his teammates getting hit with his shield to activate his follow-up attacks. So from a general standpoint, I can recommend Aventurine to be used in any team comp as the standalone defensive character. But of course, he does have exceptional synergy with follow-up characters because he gains more blind bet stacks per turn, courtesy of his A6 trace. Unit synergies in this category include the following. Jin Yuan, Himiko, Dr. Ratio, Topaz, Clara, and 4 stars that have follow-ups like Herta. With any of those units that I just listed, Aventurine will be a great sustain option for teams that they specifically operate on. And since you're not building specifically around Aventurine, even though you totally can, which we'll get to, the team will be structured around the DPS that you choose and then plop in Aventurine as your fourth sustain. So characters like Jing Yuan, Himiko Herta, and Clara have specific layouts that they prefer being on, whether it's something like Hyper Carry Jing Yuan, Infinite Follow Up Himiko Herta, or Counter Clara. You'll set up the supports that they need, and then you'll add Aventurine and go to town. I'm going to specifically dive into synergy with Topaz because of her follow up damage increase, and Dr. Ratio because he's free and more people should be able to use him. Topaz and Numbi is one of the best solo pairings with Aventurine. Her kit is flexible enough that she can run full supportive and speed oriented, sacrificing her damage, or be a dual DPS with another follow up attack damage dealer. Her skill is a follow up attack and provides proof of debt debuff that increases all sources of follow up damage by a significant amount. Her basic attack is considered a follow-up attack with her A2 trace, and all of Numbi's attacks are also considered follow-up attacks. So the combination of these things makes her SP positive, because you can use her basic attack as a follow-up attack, she's a good support or sub DPS depending how you build her, and she's a follow-up queen. If built with enough speed, Topaz by herself can complete the three follow-up attacks to cap out Aventurine's A6 trace for max uptime. Now under Dr. Ratio, our free imaginary DPS amplified by debuffs and follow-up attacks. So, with or without Topaz, Dr. Ratio also gains quite nice benefits alongside Aventurine. With Topaz, you'll easily gain enough debuffs for 100% follow-up attack chance. Without, you may need one more character, but most likely we won't have to force it. Aventurine himself without Light Cone provides a debuff with his ultimate, and with his signature Light Cone also provides a debuff with his follow-up attack. The combination of these traits makes Aventurine one of the best sustain units for Dr. Ratio's holistic team. He's also imaginary typing, just like Aventurine, so that's a plus. And finally, you can still make Aventurine himself a DPS. If you combine Topaz, Sparkle, and one more Harmony unit, then you've got an Aventurine hypercarry comp. Topaz provides the follow-up damage increase and triggers her own follow-up attacks to cap out his A6. Sparkle boosts Aventurine to use his abilities to gain more energy and also provides healthy skill points. And then the final Harmony character can further be used to strengthen Aventurine. You can run something like Ruan Mei, Yukong, or even Ting Yun for the burst cycling, even though Ting Yun buffs attack and not defense. Anything really goes here. In this particular team comp, I'd have Aventurine on crit damage body, defense boots, imaginary orb, and defense rope, skipping the speed boots and just relying on Sparkle to boost them up. So overall, Aventurine is a really solid pickup and can work on any team in the game as long as you need sustain. His drawback is that he can't heal, so if his shield isn't strong enough, your team may encounter some long-term problems. But I think because he's so FTB friendly with many light cone options, little reliance on Eidolons, and extremely flexible main stats for relics, he'll be a comfortable pickup for most players. And that should be a very detailed guide for Aventurine. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like and comment. It really helps the channel and lets YouTube know it was pretty good. Thank you guys for watching. Good luck on polling for Aventurine. And as always, we'll see you next time. Take care.